Does a black hole, that enigmatic cosmic vortex spell catastrophic implosion, serve as a gateway to parallel worlds? Or guard a treasury of multidimensional secrets? Could it be that we've already taken a leap down this rabbit hole, unbeknownst to us, living inside a gargantuan black hole? Einstein's magnificent brainchild, the general theory of relativity, continues to reign supreme, yet its prowess crumbles at the heart of black holes and the moment of the Big Bang. These perplexing nodes, where matter compresses into infinite densities, are deemed singularities. They pose a daunting challenge to the mathematical fabric of general relativity, refusing to be neatly woven into its complex tapestry. Intriguingly, black holes and the Big Bang, beyond their shared talent for bamboozling Einstein, bear mathematical likenesses. This fuels audacious theories speculating that perhaps our Big Bang is nothing more than the singularity of an immensely colossal black hole. Let us plunge fearlessly into the tantalizing depths of this proposition. Our journey begins with black holes, collapse any mass considerably, and it becomes ensnared in its own gravity. In general relativity, this is represented as a point of infinite density encircled by an event horizon. Consider the event horizon as the boundary where the space itself flows like a torrent at light speed. From an external perspective, the black hole manifests as a sphere of darkness located in a specific region of space, due to the impossibility of light escaping from beneath the event horizon. Interestingly, the universe also possesses a singularity and an event horizon. The Big Bang, a point in time when matter was compressed to infinite density and all spatial points overlapped, is considered the singularity of the universe. Following the Big Bang, space expanded and continues to do so. This expansion results in our cosmological event horizon, where some remote areas of the universe are moving away from us faster than light speed. Is it possible that we find ourselves inside a black hole, dwelling within a universe that is an enormous white hole? To address this mind-bending inquiry, we would have to manipulate the interior of a black hole to make it mathematically indistinguishable from a universe for an observer inside the black hole. So we're left with the query, is our universe a black hole, perhaps a white hole? It's improbable, yet not impossible. While we don't have any compelling reasons to assert that our universe is a black hole, the hypothesis cannot be dismissed completely. However, if it is true, there's a silver lining. We figured out what the inside of a black hole looks like. It looks like our universe. And yes, it does contain libraries. One day, we might stumble upon a book in one of these libraries that answers the question, what lies beyond the event horizon if we're inside a black white hole? Perhaps a universe teeming with beings, asking the same question and reaching the same conclusion, that they too are within a black hole. And so the cycle might continue infinitely, creating an endlessly nested space-time of black holes. Is it possible that we are merely pawns in a cosmic game, with the universe serving as the chessboard and black holes as the chess pieces? Maybe we're dwelling inside one of these celestial anomalies right now, housed within the jaws of an insatiable black hole. This intriguing concept is drawn from Einstein's laudable general theory of relativity, which, despite its unparalleled success, grapples with the puzzling reality of black holes and the Big Bang. These phenomena involve the compression of matter to infinite densities, giving rise to singularities where the math of general relativity crumbles. It's curious how black holes and the Big Bang share more than just an Einsteinian headache. They have mathematical commonalities that led some physicists to postulate that the Big Bang might just be the singularity of an impossibly massive black hole. Let's delve into this seemingly absurd proposition. First off, let's consider black holes. If you compress any substantial mass far enough, it falls into its own gravitational pit. In the realm of general relativity, this results in a point of infinite density encased by an event horizon. It's helpful to perceive this event horizon as the surface where the flow of space is akin to a swift river coursing at the speed of light, a current against which nothing can prevail. From an outsider's perspective, a black hole appears as a globe of darkness in a specific location in space. This is due to the fact that not even light can break free from the gravitational pull below the event horizon. The universe too boasts its own singularity and event horizon. The singularity, the Big Bang, signifies a moment in time when all matter was compressed to infinite density and all spatial points coalesced. From this cataclysmic event, space expanded and continues to do so. The universe's event horizon is the result of this expansion. The universe expands evenly in every direction, 
with distant regions hurtling away from us faster than light. Thus, there's a specific distance that marks the boundary of our observable universe. We can never witness any events happening beyond this threshold. However, there's complexity to this. We're still receiving light from objects now located beyond this horizon, as it was emitted by these objects before they crossed the boundary. Additionally, the accelerating expansion of the universe means that our cosmological event horizon is closer to us than the point where the speed of recession equals the speed of light. Nevertheless, the effect is the same. We can never observe any events occurring now beyond that horizon. Putting complications aside, there are striking parallels between black holes and our universe. A primary difference is that a black hole's singularity seems to be a point of infinite density in space, whereas the Big Bang's singularity is a moment of infinite density that embraced all of space. However, this difference is not as pronounced as it seems. Both singularities inhabit all of space, the distinction being that the Big Bang's singularity lies in the past of all space, whereas the black hole's singularity lies in the future for all the space it encompasses. Let's pause here to provide a more detailed explanation. Our discussions have often circled around a concept known as geodesic incompleteness, which is key to our understanding. In general relativity, objects not subjected to a force follow a path called a geodesic. These are the straightest paths possible through a curved spacetime, and in a sense, they form the grid that defines the fabric of spacetime. You can define a geodesic at a point in space and time, then trace it forwards and backwards. That trace outlines the path of an object in motion, but you can also extrapolate beyond the object's trajectory. You can trace the geodesic into the infinite future or all the way back to the Big Bang. It's defined for all past and future times, independently of any object. Geodesics usually don't just terminate, except at singularities. Singularities, in the context of general relativity, are defined as the endpoints of geodesics. All geodesics in the universe converge and end at the Big Bang. We describe the Big Bang as a past space-like singularity because it occupies all of space in the past. A black hole, on the other hand, contains a future space-like singularity. This means that all geodesics within a black hole's spacetime end at the singularity in the future. This doesn't necessarily mean that you're doomed to be crushed by a black hole. You might be, but you might not be. The black hole's singularity is an all-encompassing future for the spacetime that lies beneath the event horizon. Just as the Big Bang is the encompassing past for the universe outside, the black hole and the Big Bang singularities are starting to resemble each other, with their differentiation lying in their positioning in the future versus the past, and the fact that black holes are embedded within a larger universe, while the Big Bang constitutes the entire universe. The question then arises, how do we morph a black hole to look more like a universe? We need to construct the black hole's interior in a way that it becomes mathematically indistinguishable from a universe for someone inside the black hole. The first step is to reposition the singularity to the past. A time-reversed black hole, otherwise known as a white hole, can provide a solution. The past, space-like singularity of a white hole, is encircled by an event horizon that is the opposite of a black hole's event horizon. It can only be crossed from the inside to the outside. Space flows at the speed of light across the event horizon from within. This bears a resemblance to our universe, a past space-like singularity, and an event horizon that can't be crossed from the outside. Despite these similarities, the interior of a white hole looks nothing like our universe. A white hole is comprised of pure space-time with no matter included, and it's highly inhomogeneous, with the curvature changing dramatically as you near the singularity. However, our universe appears to be highly homogeneous, with matter and energy evenly distributed and the space-time curvature nearly flat. If such a white hole were large enough, it could be identical to our universe. This is the premise behind the black hole cosmology hypothesis proposed by physicist Raj Pathria in 1972. As far as research suggests, no one has conclusively shown that this can't be the case. There's also the idea that universes are born as white holes resulting from the collapse of a black hole. This is the cosmological natural selection theory by Lee Smolin, which suggests that universes reproduce through black holes. When a star collapses to form a black hole on the other side of the singularity, essentially in a new baby universe, a white hole explodes and becomes a new Big Bang. This scenario resembles the process of natural selection. Universes with more black holes produce more offspring, 
thus passing on the laws of physics that promote black hole formation. This leads to an increasing number of universes that are finely tuned for black hole production. However, Smolin's idea isn't without its critics. There's no evidence that new universes spring from black holes, and there are reasons to be skeptical about this assumption. For instance, it's not clear how the information about the laws of physics could be transmitted from a parent universe to its offspring. In addition, if the laws of physics change in the new universe, the singularity itself would change, casting doubt on the conservation of information. There is another problem, the cyclic nature of this model. For an entity to be able to reproduce, it needs to have a life cycle. In this model, there's no defined death for a universe. It would exist forever, constantly producing new universes. Some critics argue that Smolin's model doesn't make sense without introducing some kind of cycle in which universes can live and die. And then there's the problem of how to test this idea. At present, we have no way of accessing other universes to see if they are offspring of our own, or parent universes to our own. Even if we could, it would be a daunting task to verify the hypothesis, as it would require us to examine the fine details of the laws of physics in many universes to confirm a trend towards increased black hole production. Despite these criticisms, Smolin's idea is still intriguing. It represents a significant shift in how we think about our universe, not as an isolated system, but as part of a much larger multiverse, with its own processes of evolution and reproduction. However, whether our universe is an offspring of a larger universe, a result of a collapsing star in another reality, or simply one universe among a nearly infinite ensemble, it is clear that our understanding of the cosmos and our place in it is far from complete. As we continue to investigate these questions, the mystery of the universe, our cosmic home, remains one of the most compelling in all of science.